Alrighty, so excellent guys. So thank you so much for being here with me tonight, uh, this afternoon. I'm used to tonight because I always do my lives tonight. We're just here to learn how to play uh, Trust No One, which is uh, a game that was inspired by Among Us that Kim Kit, oh my God, it's been a blessing because it could not have come in at a perfect time. You know, we have a couple weeks left of school and we know how sometimes that can get tough. So I'm going to walk through kind of, I made a little infographic that I'm going to go ahead and drop a link in here. Hopefully that is the right link. Uh, it's on, it's a Google link, but I put this infographic in here. It's going to give you several resources to play GimKit successfully. Okay. So some of the resources in here are only going to benefit Spanish teachers, but a lot of them are going to, half of them are going to benefit, you know, other teachers. If you teach other languages and you have time to like, you know, look at the Spanish resource and maybe make something for people who teach your language, please, please, please uh, do that. I wish I could, I spoke more languages so that I could support more teachers who speak other languages, but this is what we have going on. So we have GimKit, which is a platform and it's, a, it's amazing. If you play Kahoot, if you play quizzes, if you place anything else, uh, it's it's engaging. But GimKit, honestly, it just came and it totally surprised me because the level of engagement went up on, on the games that I played with my students. And I love GimKit because it provides the students repetition of the questions. So if they get a question wrong, they can uh, retry again later. They're focused when they're reading the questions and they're getting repetitions and they're like meaningful repetitions because the students are engaged and play so it's like play and repetitions. It's amazing. And then they earn cash. It used to be that they earn cash. And then they, with that cash that they earn, they have options to multiply their earnings and they kind of like invest some of their cash to make more cash, which I think is pretty neat. And, and then, you know, you have a winner in the class and, um, and it's pretty, pretty engaging as it is. If you have played basic game kid, but I am going over few basic things about GimKit because there, I have some people in here who have never played GimKit. So uh, that is pretty much what GimKit is, is if you play Kahoot or quizzes, it is like that, but it's on overdrive mode and it's more and more engaging. So as far as what it costs, it does cost $59.88 per year, but you do have a 30 day free trial that if you never had, you know, you can, you can use, I pay monthly and I honestly don't even know how much I pay for it. Uh, but definitely, if you have never used it, uh, they have a trial. So sign up for a trial and they won't even ask you for a credit card for the trial. So you can just try it. OK, you can also pay by month, says Kristen. Um, so you can play uh, by the month. And she says, I'm planning to pay for June, January to, through May, which will be about twenty five dollars for ninety nine a month. OK, awesome. They have an option to pay per month. All right, I think the investment is worth it because of the engagement and the data generated. Okay, especially the engagement. It's just, it's just the engagement is different from Kahoot. It's different from the competitor games. That's why I just love it as it was. However, uh, when they came up with this new mode, which is a trust no one mode, um, you are uh, talking about, uh, and I didn't even ask you, everyone should be able to see my screen, yes? Okay, so when we're talking about the other, the trust no one mode, uh, we are looking into, um, we're looking into uh, something that is super compelling to the students and on its own. Okay, they are already spending a lot of time. They're already spending a lot of time uh, playing Among Us every day. Okay, my son plays Among Us. All the middle schoolers play among us. All the high schoolers play among us. I mean, that's just what what has taken our students. That's where their attention's at. So, Game Kid was created a game inspired by Among Us, and it's called Trust No One. Okay, so I played it already this week with several, with all of my classes actually, and I played it uh, maybe about three times already. And the it was it was amazing because. You know, we, I, I'm reading a novel right now. I'm reading uh, a Frida right now with my students. And I delivered the input from chapter one and whatnot. And then I wanted to do a check for understanding and they were super intrigued. My questions were about the chapter and the characters and who said this and what happened. So I just created a bunch of questions to check their understanding for the novel. I created about 27 questions or so. And, um, 
and they were playing and normally you know we play the game and and they enjoy it and it's whatever but after we played the pl the game lasts a lot longer so this is one thing you want to know about trust no one if you're going to play trust no one there is not exact number of minutes that the game is going to last okay it's going to depend it's going to depend on the amount of students you have in a class and it's going to depend on the settings that you are going to give that game and we're going to check into that in just a moment because we are going to play among us in a little bit so that that will depend so my thing if you are new to GimKit, and if you are haven't played uh, even if you're not new to GimKit, you haven't played this you want to establish some norms as a teacher just like with any activity and with any new game that you bring into the classroom maybe you want to allow them to just you know the only thing you want them to do in the target language are the questions and you want to allow them to enjoy the game and speak in english if they want to maybe that's what you want to do and that's fine whatever you want to do is fine but what i mean by establishing norms let them know that if you want them to stay in the target language you have to let them know that because they're going to get so excited they're going to get so excited and because this is something that is known to them they're going to get a feel for the game and they're going to be like okay yes this is just like among us they're going to get so excited and they're going to be speaking in english so you have to define as a teacher if you want to allow them to just interact with your target language in the questions and allow them to interact on the chat or when they're talking to each other uh, while they're playing in english or in your target language if you are going to uh, encourage them to use the target language remember that we have to provide the language students will need to stay on the target language uh, so if we want the students, uh, we can't just say to the students, oh, guys, we're going to play this game and you must stay in Spanish. Because we haven't taught them, at least I haven't taught them the language about that is required to play among us. I never taught them that. And it's very, very peculiar language. So uh, you want to provide them the target language if you want them to stay in the target language the entire time. Okay. It works well, poll class mode. I love it because I have 30 kids in my classes. so. I, the, I think the bigger the class, the better, honestly, to play uh, to play this game. That's not to say that if you have a small class, like right now we have a small class, we have 11 people in here. That's not to say we cannot play it and enjoy it with 11 people in here, okay? That's gonna mean some things that I'm gonna show you in just a second, okay? So some resources that will help, and I already gave you the link and I'm gonna post it in there again, and I'm gonna share it for the people who are watching us on the Facebook community, if you're watching me on the Facebook community right now live, it is 312, jump on this Zoom call so that you can play with us in here. Uh, the link is, is in the Facebook community right now. So uh, resources that will help this, uh, again, this is for all teachers. Uh, this movie was inspired by the popular game Among Us. Uh, you know, just to, uh, some people will care about seeing what Among Us is like. I link a video that is really good at explaining what is Among Us and, and in like five minutes. So if you watch that video at your own time, you will understand what the kids are so hyped up about. If you have no idea how to play Among Us, you heard about it, you will understand what the kids are so hyped up about. The second video is by Senor Bells. I hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly or Senor Bellas, but I think it's Bells. And YouTube, he has two tutorial videos where he is showing you what it's like to play as an imposter and what it's like to play as a crewmate, okay? He has two very useful videos on YouTube that he posted there about four days ago that I have linked in here. So this first two are, if you, it doesn't matter what language you teach, you can kind of like get a better understanding for the feeling behind the game and how to play more successfully. And then I have two resources. And like I said, the only ones I have are for Spanish teachers. So if you teach something else, I am very, very, very sorry. And if you come up with something, and that you're willing to share, please share it in the community so that other teachers who teach other languages can also benefit from, you know, we can save each other time and support each other. So Senora Downey, she created a super useful infographic and uh, where she has some vocabulary. Let me click on it. And um, so where she has some vocabulary, you can screenshot this and then you have some vocabulary you can go over with the students that they're going to need to play the game if you want them to stay in the target language. Then we also have uh, Samara Spielberg, as if she hadn't shared enough this, this month of November, she did the whole gratitude unit and shared it with us. She shared her Blue Kit game, which is another game platform that is free, that is very engaging. She shared useful vocabulary uh, in Spanish 
so that the students they can they can practice vocabulary they can look at vocabulary they can you know play you uh, and get more familiarized with vocabulary uh so that they can use it uh when they are playing trust no one so that one is it's in spanish if somebody who speaks french or other languages wants to do something similar uh that will be awesome and uh, so like i said i already shared this link with you and i will post it in the facebook community so now let's get to business all right, so I'm going to go over to GimKit, and this is my GimKit account. And um, so we're going to play a logo one because I did not, I, I didn't want to do something in Spanish. I didn't want to do something because I had no idea who was going to come. So we're just going to play something that everybody's familiar with. We're going to play a logo game. So once you are in GimKit, you can, if you're brand new to GimKit, you can always search for GimKit uh, for kids. But I always like creating my own. I just always like creating my own because here are just some um, um, before I jump into the game and, and just, you know, some pointers um, is that I like to have different types of questions. I like to have different types of questions in context related to the chapter so that my students can really acquire the target structures. I don't just like to give them, oh, you know, I might have some questions where I ask them something easy, like what does this word mean? But for the most part, I want them to be processing at the highest level with my questions when we are playing GimKit. That's why I just like to make my own questions. So as you can see, this GimKit, we were reviewing chapter one and two of three that has 35 questions. This is my first tip. If you are brand new to GimKit or if you are going to play Trust No One, because if Trust No One, if Trust No One has, um, I mentioned earlier, you really are not in control of the time with trust no one. That is one thing that you as a teacher want to keep in mind. You're not in control of the time. Uh, it's however long it takes to find the imposter. So again, could last um, seven minutes, 10 minutes or 20 minutes. Okay, depending on the settings. So somebody asked, I'm just pointing over here. I'm, I, somebody asked, uh, what do the answers to these questions look like? Uh, some of the answers are very simple, like it's about characters, and some of them I make them read a lot, and uh, and things of that sort. So, um, but yes, I'm gonna be doing. Uh, I'm actually, if you're interested, I'm gonna be doing um, a workshop pretty soon on uh, reading novels in the virtual classroom. If you're interested, I definitely hang out in my Facebook community, and you know I can tell you all about this and how to do really awesome comprehension comprehension questions that work for me with my students. So again, like I mentioned, in GimKit, you want to keep in mind uh, with trust no one, I hope we have more people coming, awesome, uh, that uh, you are not in control of how long the game is going to be played. Uh, although you can end the game at any time, okay? You can end the game at any time, uh, definitely. You do have that option. Uh, but that's what I mean. Because we're not in control of how long we are going to play the game, you want to have a good amount of questions. I would say, uh, I would like to have at least uh, 20 questions, maybe 15 questions, 20 questions, for, because even though it's going to repeat and recycle the questions, I do want to give my students the opportunity to process the language in many, many, many ways, even though they're not going to get bored if you only have 10 questions. But why don't why not make the most out of it and give them just a, a lot of questions where they're recycling the vocabulary in different ways same vocabulary in different ways give them a lot of opportunities so that they even that increases engagement okay they are already going to be engaged because they love love this game mode okay but it's going to increase the engagement and we give them even more questions because not only are they going to be engaged in the game, but they're also going to feel like they're being challenged academically while they're playing GimKit. All right. So that's my first recommendation. Have a kit that has um, 15, 20. If you can have even more than 20 questions, have 20 questions. Here is a pointer. Have your students create the questions. OK, G get like a Google document. If you did a story or something, or uh, whatever the topic is that you just deliver, create a Google document and have every student tell the students, okay, I want you to come up with questions. I want you one question to be multiple choice, one fill in the blank. If the multiple choice, you give me the choices, let them do the work for you. <laughs> let them do the work for you. And then you later on in the evening when you have time or in the afternoon, you can go through the questions your students made and then you can uh, 
uh, select the best ones and make a GIMP kit. And now you don't have to, you know, worry about creating the questions. It's your students created the questions. So if that is possible, you know, with the languages that you teach, then, you know, have the students create the questions. Why not? Okay, so now here we go. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play. Uh, we're going to go ahead and play Trust No One. So you will play it. You will just go play live. And we're going to play Trust No One. They do have a blog post that explains everything. I did read over the blog post before I played it. If you have the time, I do suggest that you read it. But, you know, after watching me here today, you probably won't need to read it. So you're going to tell, I told my students, we're going to play, um, GimKit came up with it. I told them, I teach high school. So I said, GimKit came up with a game that is just like Among Us, except that obviously the focus is learning, but we're going to enjoy it. The same principles behind it. So right now we have 13 people in this meeting. So that means um, this is one thing that I want to advise. If it's your first time playing, you have several options here. So in my class where I have 30 students, because I want them to, I don't want the game to drag on forever. I have about six imposters. So if you have 30 students in a class like me, you want to have six, eight imposters even, okay? Um, I mean, 10 if you want to, but if you put 10, the game is going to be over uh, very quick. So I would say six is a good number. Okay, right now we have 13 people. So we're gonna have four imposters, okay? 14, four imposters. Uh, so that we can kind of like get a, a good feel of what that's like, okay? Then every person that is going to be, you have two groups of people. Once the game starts, you have two groups of people. You have imposters and then you have crewmate, okay? We don't tell each other who we are. We, we don't tell each other. We're gonna know who we are because the, the, the phone is gonna tell us you are an imposter or you are a crewmate, but we don't share with each other who we are. Um, so uh, you have imposters and you have crewmates and then the people who are the crewmates, they have they can run investigations, okay? They can run investigations to try to figure out who are the imposters. And basically, how do you run investigations? Well, every time you answer a question on GIMKit, you get a one point. And I think the investigations cost, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I don't even remember how many points, six. I know that if you're an imposter, they cost you, it costs you six points to run a fake investigation. Um, but I think uh, it's like 10 points, if I'm not mistaken. We'll see in just a second. But it does cost points. So in order for the students to run investigations, in order for students to blend in the game and play the game the way they want to, they have to answer questions, which is awesome because they want to be able to run investigations and they want to be able to do all these things. So they want to answer the questions. So that's another motivator for that. So. You can change this number. Uh, how many investigations can a person run? Um, so you can do, uh, we, we're gonna do like 15. I really don't care how many number. I don't think this number really matters a lot. You can have more or less investigations. And then how reliable do we want the investigation? So we are playing, you can leave it at normal. This whole week I left it at normal, but what does this mean, okay? This means that, um, you can run an investigation and spend your money. Let's say I'm running an investigation and I'm trying to find out if Paulino or Diane are imposters, okay? So I'm gonna run an investigation on Paulino first and then it's gonna come back inconclusive. So because it's gonna be inconclusive, that makes him, oh, he might be an imposter, okay? He might be an imposter. So I'm gonna run another investigation again on him to see if it comes back again inconclusive uh, because if it is, if it keeps coming back inconclusive, that means he's probably an imposter, okay? And if it comes back uh, all clear, that doesn't necessarily mean they're not imposters. Most, in here it's normal. So sometimes that means that it's normal, that sometimes it's gonna be true and sometimes it's not gonna be true. If you want it almost perfect, then you can change it so that it's easier to guess, so that it's easier to guess that uh, the person is indeed an imposter, okay? But I like to keep it normal, even though this gets on my students' nerves. I do have a student who says, oh, you know, I, I ran an investigation on such person and this thing is lying, okay? So that, that is another thing that you can do. And then you have student call meetings. So GIMKit gives you the option. Every, when you think you know who the imposter is, you can call a meeting, you the teacher can go and call a meeting 
and have everybody come in, stop the game, the game stops, and everybody votes on who they think is the imposter, okay? And by this time, by the time you call the meeting, they have already ran investigations on each other to figure out how to, to figure out who's imposter, okay? So with your points, you can run investigations on people. With your points, you can also peek at somebody else's notebook. So if uh, Kristen has ran 12 investigations, then I can pay money to look into Kristen's notebook and see what her notebook says and get some data so I can try to figure out who the imposter, if, 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 she, if she's figured out who's an imposter. So I can do that too, okay? So you'll be able, to, when we play the game in just a moment, you will be able to go to um, uh, see what, what you can do as a crewmate and as an imposter because you as a teacher don't decide who's a crewmate and who is an imposter. You don't even know, okay? So the, the game itself decides who's what, and they'll let you know, the game lets you know what you are, okay? So, so you have that going on. Please do not, once you hit here, you don't have to do anything here, okay? Just leave it like that. Because if you click here, it's gonna convert it into a classic game and we don't wanna do classic game or team mode game. We just wanna play trust no one, okay? So class, uh, I don't have this. I, I do have the class, but we're not playing with my class right now. That's just to avoid having them. It's easier for them to sign in. Answer check, that gives the students the ability to check their answer if they get it wrong. I always have that on because I want them to do well. So I want them to pay attention and learn from the mistakes quickly. That's like quick feedback. Um, if you wanna have the music, if you wanna allow students to join in late uh, because I'm virtual and if you're virtual and you know how that virtual world works, we do wanna allow students to join in, name, in late because we don't wanna leave them behind, okay? Something that I don't know but that I saw it's possible, okay, and I haven't played with that, is actually, Gimkit said that you can play the game in any language, okay? So they, I know that that is possible, but I haven't checked to see which setting I have to go use to play it in Spanish, okay? But we are, uh, we here teach different languages, uh, or people here right now on Zoom, we all teach different languages, so we're gonna play the game in English so that everybody can understand what's going on. Um, and then Diane is saying they said it was auto translated. Oh man. Okay, so that's that's not necessarily super awesome. Okay, so uh, I I might try to play it, but I can't give you information on that because I haven't tried it myself. But I know it's possible, and uh, and I'll and I'll see if I can give an update on my Facebook community once I try it in the in Spanish when I do it with my class in Spanish. So we're gonna go ahead and play the game. It's an easy game. This is about logos. Okay, can the questions be a picture? Yes, this, this, this one right here is about logo. So you're gonna see a picture and you're gonna have to tell me which logo that is. Just simple stuff that uh, you know most of us sh should know and I'm pretty sure I don't know some of them. Okay, so we're gonna go in here and we're gonna join the game. And the login is just like Kahoot quizzes. It's very simple and I'm gonna do what I always do with my class, even though they can see it. I'm just gonna go give you the link and I'm gonna give you the code 44652 and we're gonna start joining, okay? And I'm gonna start, I'm gonna join myself as well. Ooh, somebody put an angry face on my video, why? <laughs> I don't know, okay, so here we go. Uh, we're gonna go to gimkit.com, mate, um, we're gonna go live. And this is another tip, okay? In the classroom, you wanna play this game with your students. You just do. You wanna play this game with your students because it creates that, it builds that community. You're gonna have a lot of fun with it. You're gonna understand what it's like being on the game. I, every time I play this with my students, I am in the game. I am in the game playing with them and they love it. They love having me there because they try to sabotage me and, uh, and all kinds of things. So it makes me feel like part of their community and it, you know, they see you as part of their community. So uh, I totally advise that you play the game and, um, and, and have fun with your students when you are playing this. So we have, we're missing, we're missing two people. If you don't wanna play and you just wanna watch, that's fine. But that kind of like, I would suggest you play, let me know. Uh, how do you get there? You have to go on your phone or in a separate tab 
you're going to go to gimkit.com slash live. Uh, and then you're going to type the code 44652. Okay. I don't know if anybody else who's watching us is uh, joining. Okay. Reina, let me know. Uh, well, I'll see your name when you are able to get here. So again, you're going to go to gimkit.com slash live and then 44652. And let me make sure. Yay, Reina's in. Okay. Yes, I am sharing my sound. Okay, so there are several things that we are going to be paying attention to when the game starts. So the game is gonna tell you what is going on. You can skip the instructions once your students are used to it. If you pay more money, you can run a, a public investigation. And once it, the person comes back clear, their name is here. So you know that I'm not the murderer because somebody paid top, top points to get a, a public investigation. And then you know that Diane is not an imposter either. Uh, so we are not imposters. So you got to figure out who else is left that it's maybe an imposter. Okay. So what the students will do in the class, because they are more familiar with this game, that you, that you and I are, they are gonna start chatting and they're gonna start, some of them are gonna speak sometimes, uh, depending on your, the class culture that you have going on. And I'm sorry, thank you, uh, Diane. I'm gonna turn off the music for a second, okay? So, I like to keep the music with the students because you know the students do like it. Um, but what I was saying is like, you want to, the students are going to start saying, oh, in the chat, they're going to start saying, I ran an investigation on this person. So I'm going to tell you this. I ran an investigation uh, investigation on AM, and it came back inconclusive. Okay. I think AM is an imposter. So if somebody else 
if somebody else ran an investigation on AM and they also got it inconclusive, you might want to let me know that in the chat and, and, and say, hey, I did the same thing. Yes, I think she's it. I think she's an imposter. So that then when, when a student pays points to call on a meeting, we all can vote AM out, okay? Uh, that is up to you. Diane has asked, can you share the results in the chat? I like to have my students share the results on the chat. They don't have to every time. And, uh, but that is up to you, okay? So you can allow them to share the results in the chat, especially if you're allowing them to use like the target language and they're doing it in target language. This is an amazing opportunity, like share all you want. But, um, but that's up to you if you want to allow them to or not. Because uh, it does get really intense. So um, the other thing you want to do, you want to be aware of, okay, just some tricks about the game is that um, so people will start investigating, okay? So you have to kind of figure out, know how to play the game uh, among us to be good at it. And that's, the students are awesome at it, all right? So uh, usually people who run a lot of investigations, they're like, oh, that's an imposter because they're trying to blend in as crewmates. So they're running a lot of investigations. So if I see who's running a lot of investigations, so yeah, you know, uh, I see that uh, AM, she has a one, one, two, okay. Holly might be an imposter too. She's running a lot of investigations, you know, like, so I may or may not be right, but but it says that Holly isn't. So I don't know, guys, I think AM is, is an imposter. Okay, so no, when you have 10 points, I think it's 10 points, you can go to the top left and go to mission control and go to meeting. Okay, I'm not gonna click on meetings since I'm the teacher. We only have six meetings. We only have the ability to, to meet six times to figure out who the imposters are. Okay, somebody already called meeting. JC is saying I'm a sus. Okay, sus means suspicious or sauce in Spanish. That means suspicious. That is a slang word that the students are using now in the classroom. They're saying, I am sussing on you, or, you know, that, that's actually a verb now, okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and sus, you are sus, you are sus. So that's what that means, suspicious. Okay, so we're gonna go to vote for the imposter. So I think AM is sus, definitely. Oh, uh, I am not, uh, JC is saying I am a sus. I am not, I am on the clear list, okay? Holly's saying Blanca is sus, okay? So uh, we're gonna, you, get, you get to vote. I think AM is sus, but you know, you guys can believe me or not. And I lie too, because when I am an imposter to my students, I tell them, I, I, you know, I, I just kind of like throw them off and I say I ran investigations and whatnot so that they don't get me. So again, like Diane asked earlier, do you want your students to be telling each other who they're thinking? In the actual game Among Us, that is the fun part of the game. Actually discussing, oh, I saw this person doing this. No, that person cannot be it because this person was doing this. So that's why I allow it in my class. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start voting right now and everybody's gonna vote for who they think is the imposter. Okay, so we are waiting on a couple more, five more, five more. So who called this public meeting? We do not, yes, one of the players called it. I did not call this one. So one of the players called it, yes. But the teacher can also call it. So if you notice that nobody's calling investigations, like after five minutes, you might wanna call an investigation, I mean, a, a voting uh, session so that you know they can kind of like come back. Sometimes they do take like my Spanish three, it takes a long time to call investigations because they want to rack up the points before they start doing anything. Okay, so uh, it seems like two people haven't voted yet. So I'm, I'm going to end the vote voting early. You can do that as a teacher if you see two students are not uh, voting. Okay, and we're going to see what happens. Oh, AM was voted on the ship. I think she's a sus. We'll see. Yes, I knew it. I knew it. Okay. So. Yes, yes. 
So, you know, like it's all the suspense and everything. And uh, what it's going to happen is that AM is going to continue to play. She's not kicked out. She was voted off the ship, but they're going to continue to play. And I remind my students, the more questions you answer correctly, the better your grade is going to look. Um, so um, also what AM can do, she can give her points away to uh, the people, her, the other sus, sus the other uh, imposters, to help them do things. Okay, so if we had voted off a crewmate, that crewmate is going to continue to play, and that crewmate can give points away to her teammates as well. Okay, so they stay on the game even though they're voted off. They stay in the game. Oh, somebody else. Okay. All right, so if you call them a mystic, and you know what happens when, when, when this happens in my class and somebody, we just had a voting session and then we have another voting session this week, my students get upset. They're like, no, you need to give us more time to investigate and this, that, and the other. So somebody is calling uh, again, a voting session. Mm. Somebody's already sussing on someone. So we are going to see, I don't know, what is the chat saying? Uh, does anybody have any ideas who the sus is? And, and, you know, the students will be saying, uh, Andrea investigated me twice as Emmy. But Emmy, you could be just playing sus because that, the the, um, the imposters, that's what they do. They're, they're like, they will get in the chat and they will, you know, say, no, it's not me. Or I investigated it. And, and you know, they're, they're like really good. The kids are really good at blending in as a crewmate. Okay, so we're saying, Diane is saying maybe Reina, you couldn't kill, uh, clear Blanca, says Holly. Uh, was Blanca on the clear list? So all of this, all of this, um, all of this uh, dialogue that we're having uh, in, the, in the chat is what happens with the students, okay? It's what happens with the students in the real class. Like this is exactly what they're talking about and they're into it. So um, oh, now we're gonna start voting. Sorry, I, I, I'm talking to you guys and I'm like, we're gonna start voting. So now we can cast our vote. Who do we think is gonna be the imposter? So um, Reina says, okay, Reina, you are, um, it, it should pop up on your game kit that you can vote. It should pop up that you can vote. Okay, so Blanca that, can I clear. Is that clear list uh, for real or it could also be not true? Like someone uh, in the clear list could still be an imposter? Uh, yeah, because we have normal reliability. But, um, but, but uh, like the investigations, but that doesn't happen very often with the clear list, to be honest. So let's see, we have um, Blanca. Everybody's saying Blanca, but I don't know. You guys vote for whoever you want. Okay, we need five more votes. Oh, okay, four more votes, please. Okay, three. This is exactly what happens in the classroom, <laughs> you know? Like, all right, so we have three people not voting or thinking about it. Let's see what's in the chat. <laughs> JC saying, that is what an imposter would say. Don't trust the clearest. <laughs> okay. Yes, uh, Kristen is saying, do imposters join the chat or spoke uh, or spoken discussions? Yes, all the time. They lie all the time. They're good liars. Yes. Okay, all right. Adios, Blanca. Blanca is sospechosa. She was a sus. Yes. 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 <laughs> Super bien. Awesome crewmates. Awesome crewmates. Okay. All right. Already.
Kristen, I don't understand the question, or is that just in classic mode? Uh, oh, let me see, can we freeze people? No, you cannot freeze people in here. Yeah, just in classic mode. I'm sorry, I hadn't read your question. Erta, you're getting me with the spelling like youtube versus youtube <laughs> yes i know well let me let me just say this i did not make this game i, I pulled it from from gim kid so like oh i'm just looking too fast and i'm being patient clicking and then i'm like no no no, no. Oh, dang it. i'm just saying like the y and the tube <laughs> yeah i got myself into questions too so <laughs> Okay, all right. Who are we sussing on? Who are we sussing on? Yes, uh, Diana. I noticed that too, Diana. I noticed that too. I was like, oh man, this t-shirt or anything, I can't spell. But no, I did not make this game. <laughs> Just like the quickest, easiest thing I could find. Um, all right, so we have JC saying Andrea, Amy saying no, Andrea, M uh, Holly saying it's Reina. Oh man, I didn't even check who was on the clear list. Uh, Reina, Reina, okay. <laughs> Everybody's saying that Reina is not clear. So I don't know, you vote for whoever you want. Okay, we're gonna get vote, we're gonna vote. Okay. So people are saying Andrea is us. Who was inconclusive? Uh, Andrea? Andrea. Okay, we're waiting on three people. Okay, I guess three, same three people who haven't voted. Like in the class, I would be like, same people who are asleep right now or something like that. They're watching me in pajamas, I fell asleep. <laughs> Adios, Reina. Yes. 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 Reina, you were you were acting like you did not know how to play this, Reina. <laughs> okay, so. The other thing I want to mention, okay, so we're doing very, very good, okay? Like maybe because we were uh, a smaller group, I should have had maybe just two imposters. So you can see how you can change that. Um, and you can have less imposters so that, um, because we were a small group and I had four imposters, it was kind of easy to find people. Um, so uh, if I had maybe two imposters, we will be having a much harder time finding imposters. So think about your numbers, how many people you want to have imposters and how many people uh, you want to, um, how many imposters you want and how many students you have in the classroom. Okay, I just ran an investigation on Andrea and it's uh, all clear. I don't know. And now I ran it again and she's inconclusive. I don't know. Now I'm definitely sussing on Andrea. 
All right. Okay, who are we sussing on? Who are we sussing on? JC say S inconclusive. Are we supposed to share the results with all investigation? If you want, you don't have to share the results. Like, like I told Diane earlier, that is up to you as a teacher if you want to let them discuss it. More than likely, because they do this on the real Among Us game, they will discuss it. Like if, if they're not, and that's why I just like for Spanish, like since I teach Spanish, I do want to give them the language so that they can do it as much as they can in Spanish. Um, but that's up to you if you want to allow them to say it or not, to, to discuss it or not. Okay, yeah, I think I think Andrea is us definitely. But you know, uh, we have, um, that is what a sus would say is. Okay, we're voting, we're voting. Okay. Um. I'll go ahead and end the voting early. Ah, she was it, was it, yes. Nicely done. Hey, this is the first time. This is the first time that I that I, that crewmates win in any game I host ever. Normally, like in my class, all week long, only the imposters have won because my students are so good at playing this. That's why, uh, because uh, they have the imposters have been the ones winning the entire time. So did we see anybody just to answer Paulino's questions? Because I think that's what one of my students said, Paulino, that uh, they saw a name on the clear list and, and they didn't think that person was an imposter. Uh, did anybody see anybody from the clear list that was um, um, that was listed as an imposter? No? So we had- You can, when you're an imposter, you can, um, disguise yourself so that you show up as clear when people run investigations. Oh, okay, that's why, that's why, okay. Yes, because when you're an imposter, so those of you who were imposters, you had the, uh, you could disguise, you could use your points to disguise yourself as clear when people run investigations as you. When you're an imposter, you're gonna have different options to play, uh, uh, to use your points for. You can disguise yourself, you can also, um, what else can you do? What else could you do, imposters? Because I, I, I should remember this. I was an imposter yesterday. You can take away the number of investigations that they have to run, and you can run fake investigations on people. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, so we have public investigations, clear results show for everyone. Yes, yes. If you run a public investigation, you're paying twice the money, but it shows for everybody. So it helps the crewmates helps the crewmates uh you know figure out who they're who they are um like who the imposters are so then again if you never play game kit i just kind of want to show you very quickly there's like data in here you can see which students were answering a lot of questions which ones you know weren't answering as many for whatever reason uh and like you can see their grades and uh, things like that. Nobody made a hundred because this game had a lot of errors and <laughs> it was tricky too. So, um, but yes, you can see all this data from your students. You can see uh, the general overview and the accuracy for the whole class. And then you can see the question breakdown, the most commonly missed questions. And then you can kind of, you know, uh, check out 
okay, maybe this is what they need to work on, especially if you have differentiated questions that, that also that becomes even more relevant that this data becomes more relevant then. Okay, already, what is the biggest group you can play with? That is an excellent question. I have no idea if anybody has the answer. I would definitely please let me know, but I know that I play it with my classes and like I said, in my biggest class, I have 30 kids and I don't have any issues, um, but I don't know the numbers. So I share with you and let me share it again. Um, if I can share this, uh, yeah, I can share this in just a second. Let me copy this link for those of you who were here late. I, I, was share, I share with you guys the links so that you can um, you can check out what Among Us really is, and you can get a feel for what what mentality our students are coming in with to this game. And then, if you want to know more about the imposter or crewmate, so maybe you were an imposter and you want to find out more about the crewmate experience, or vice versa. But you can see you saw how lengthy this game was, right? So, in the class, that's why I say Game Kit could not have released it at a better time. So deliver input for a little bit and then let's play trust no one and you're still having the students are still being they're engaged they're having fun and they are connecting with the language and recycling book, you know, uh, structures. Uh, and, and here are two, uh, the two resources for Spanish teachers that were already done to help aid their students. It is 100% engagement. Um, and just keep in mind what I told you, you're playing with a class that is uh, large, you want to have about six or eight imposters. If you want to play, if you want the game to drag for a long time, like if I wanted to this game to drag for a lot longer, I would have said one or two imposters. Uh, and then, you know, we will be having a harder time trying to play. Uh, you, yes, even Andrea, that's an excellent point. Even the students who have never played Among Us totally get into it. They totally get into it. So thank you so much for joining me. But before we leave, uh, oh my God, before we leave, I want to just uh, everybody to join me in saying happy birthday to Meredith because she is here and it's her birthday and she's here right now. So let's uh, say in the chat or you know, if you want to unmute yourself or something, uh, Meredith, uh, happy birthday. I hope you have an amazing day today. Uh, and I hope you get to drink your favorite drinks. Uh, so <laughs> Oh, you're already on it. Okay, I am doing I am doing water right now, but I need to switch it up. Um, so thank you so much. For, why, why hydrate? Why hydrate when you can dehydrate? Knock it off, Bertha. <laughs> oh my God, no! <laughs> I used to I used to be a lot better and at, uh, at, uh, you know just conserving my energy and everything, no matter what. But no, I don't. I don't. Overrated. So yeah, so thank you guys so much. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, today's game. Thank you for joining me. Yes. I have a question. Yes. Um, do you mind? I don't remember right now if you can change it right on Zoom to for participants to be able to save the chat. There were some nuggets um, mentioned in the chat, and I cannot copy them by uh, copy and paste. Oh, okay. What I can do, I don't think if I change the setting, it's not going to change it at this moment. Oh, okay. Hold on one second. Um, what I can do is uh, I can give you the link to the chat, Paulino. I can I, I can add the link to the chat on on when I post this resource on my Facebook community. I'll add the link to the chat too, and then you can access it because I, okay. I, I I can get it. I just can't uh, right. right now. I can't if, even if I go change the settings, it's not going to work. Okay, okay? awesome. So I'll do that. Okay, all right, guys. Thank I'll Thank see you. you sometime Bye -bye. soon. Take care. Adios.